What is up you guys, Matthew from Booster Reviews here and today we're getting back into Whoa oh My Gosh Dimash Wednesday. It's been a bit. It's been like two weeks or something like that. Uh, like I said in my past video, if you haven't checked out the Eskimo Callboy Hypa Hypa video that I put up on Monday, do yourself a favor and go check that out because that that's just a fun time. It's just a fun time, okay? But like I explained in that video, uh, I had some personal stuff going on, so I had to take some personal time for myself uh, just to kind of like get my head in the right area. And uh, so I took last week off from Wednesday and Friday's video, but it is now time to get into Whoa My Gosh Dimash Wednesday. Today we got Dimash in the very popular request in the comment sections and a ton of private messages. It is Dimash singing Drunken Concubine and Diva Dance with somebody that I've never heard of. So the last Dimash video I did was Diva Dance, uh, which I had seen already at the Bastille concert twice, uh, but I wanted to go back to the original like singer performance of it that he did uh, with Confessa. So I went back and watched that. So now I have two Diva Dances to compare this performance to. And because of how many people had requested this performance, I wanted to make sure that I was kind of familiar with the Diva Dance song as much as I could before getting into this one. But with how much this song has been requested, I'm really excited to get into this performance today. Uh, and then there's also going to be a Dimash video coming out for you on Friday as well. So make sure to stick around for Whoa My Gosh Dimash Friday. But before we get into that, one is I do have my P.O. box open. So if you want to send me anything like this shirt, that I received in my last P.O. Box opening video. Uh, if you'd like to send me anything to my P.O. Box, that address is down in the description below. As well as the fan art contest is still going on. People have been constantly sending me a bunch of fan art, all different types of cool stuff. And it's just, it's really fun to see everyone's different take on some fan art of me or Mocha or whatever it may be for the channel. So if you want to submit any of that, draw it or do some, uh, you know, digital design on like your computer or tablet or something like that, you can send that to me on Instagram at Boosted Reviews. While you're over there, make sure to give me a follow and you can send it to me at my email which is also going to be down in the description as well and the last thing is guys if you want to help support me you want to help support the channel want to help support the videos in any way you can do that at the link down in the description below as well as my paypal email will also be in the description if you prefer to do it that way but now that we got through all that it is time to get into dimash singing drunken concubine and diva dance All right. I already love the stage design. So real quick, before we even get into the song, really complicated backdrop with all this like digital kind of like, it looks like multi-dimension, just crazy stuff going on. But it also has a really nice visually traditional like Chinese oriental kind of design to it. Really, really cool. And the center of the stage here is like all these different little square diamond kind of steps so it's a multi-level stage uh, and it looks like the top of them is either really highly polished or it's mirrored looks really really nice get some nice reflection you'll probably get some nice light bounce uh, if there's lights shining down on them reflecting off that surface it'll probably look really nice really cool set design It already has kind of a Chinese instrumental. Uh. Are those TikTok emblems? Those look like little TikTok emblems. I'm just probably being stupid or something, but they, they look like TikTok emblems to me. Man, I miss Dimash's voice. It's just so, so nice and delicate. Just such a nice, easy, easy vocal. 
พี่ทางนี้ที่ฟ้าล้วนคุยเวนี้เกิวก็ไนท์ไวส์เช่นบางวันคิดนี่ด้วยวอร์ดเจนเชนเนอร์เซนเน่ matching registers with the mosh pretty well here So, real quick, before we get into the rest of this, I wanted to point out something here. First off, Greg, I know you're watching this. He's the moderator for my streams. If you guys aren't familiar with who Greg is, awesome dude. Uh, Greg, he actually bought me this chair for my birthday. Um, I'm sorry, I love the chair, but I think I'm gonna need one of these. Cause, uh, I mean, look at that chair. And then, like, I mean, <laughs> no, all jokes aside, though, look at the chair difference here. There's a couple differences here. One is Dimash's is very vibrant, bright. It looks like fire, and it's gold, and it's shiny, and it's flashy, and it's just like in your face, right? He's dressed very casually as well. He has, like, see if I can get a better. He's got like, eh, it's, it's kind of like dress pants almost a little bit, but the rest of him, he's got like a white, just regular shirt on underneath, and then his jacket is just kind of like a, a casual leather jacket opened up, you know, just kind of a relaxed look to him. His hair is all done just kind of like a normal day. But then if you go to this other guy, his chair very dark, very soft curves. It's it's very smooth and rounded versus Dimash's, which is like flames and jagged and, and crazy. And his, even though it has those little sparkle, nice kind of touch elements to it, like those accent elements, it's a very dark, very royal looking, traditional kind of just elegant vibe to this chair. And if you look at him... He's in like a much more traditional, it looks a little bit more dressy, a little bit more up, upper class, high scale, you know, kind of robe. I'm not really sure what they're exactly called, but he's in like this nice green, solid silk looking robe. Really just the, the stylistic differences here. He looks much more formal and Dimash looks much more contemporary and more casual and the, the differences in chairs are just very interesting as well. I just wanted to throw that out there. Really nice voice though. Stop waving your TikTok emblem. <laughs> That's probably not what that is at all. It wouldn't make any sense. Oh, Dimash coming in with the vocal fry. Okay, so it was the first part Drunken Concubine, and now this is the Diva Dance. I recognize this. Surprisingly nice high note. Our boy. Very nice. So I wanted to one more thing here with the as far as the stylistic choices. Like I've said, visually they have these stylistic differences. But listen to how uh, I think his name's Lee. Listen to his voice when he's holy cow those shoes. I just realized that. Look at those. Can y'all see that? Eh, not really. His shoes are like that thick. Anyway, his voice here transitioned from the voice that he just had at the beginning. And this is much more like Asian traditional operatic sound. And it's very nasal sounding. And it's very like that kind of sounding whereas Dimash when he gets into it is very operatic kind of open and he just it's much more of like a oh, rather than a but it's like they're they're on the same little wavelength but he is very very nasal in tone whereas Dimash is very open more traditional operatic rather than the more Asian style operatic very interesting but they're vocally completely 
complete opposite of each other in style. All of that resonation and all those notes are coming from right here. It is all right here. Whereas Dimash is all down in here and down up in here coming from this wider open mouth. Very interesting. Very interesting. Listen to just how much more open and... And the range is just so much more. The range is drastic. That part there was very, very Chinese. There's just something about hearing like typical or like stereotypical like Chinese kind of musical sounds that that just really feel like that dun -dun 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 in the middle that he did there. Right, I just missed it. That part. Whistle note. Whistle note alert, my dude. Goodness gracious. That was not as that was not as high as the D8 in Unforgettable Day. I would probably put that on the seventh octave somewhere. But that was just that was so unexpected. Goodness, man. Just because we haven't done one in a while. Are you ready for this? Chair slide. That deserves a chair slide. It caught me too off guard to chair slide, but that deserves one. Go back. He's not even sweating. Okay, um, hmm. So Dimash here, after that whistle note, which was ridiculous, and in the, in the versions of the Diva Dance I've heard him do, he's never hit a whistle note like that before, out of the ones that I've heard. So that was different, but everything after that seemed to follow his normal trend with his Diva Dance performances. But then you add in Lee's part... Not gonna lie, I'm not a fan of that. It, it just feels out of place. And I think partially it's the it's the nasalness to the, the random notes that he's hitting here. And the other part of it is Dimash's part that he's doing right now is so complex and so all over the place. It's like you know, there's staccato everywhere. Uh, and it's very, very complex and very just distracting whereas Lee's is very simple just meh 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 and just very delicate soft simple notes and the styles again two completely different styles but here they clash and I don't I don't enjoy this particular part I don't really enjoy that. Interesting choice, though. Okay, so back out of the diva dance now. See, here it works. Because they're doing the same thing. He's doing that more nasal, still kind of, you know, simple, soft... You know notes that he's holding here. I'm not sure if he's actually singing anything because I don't know Chinese, um, but he's singing at least some notes, and he's doing it very delicately, very soft. But Dimash has stopped doing his crazy staccato everywhere busy vocal, 
and he's come down and joined him in this more softer, more delicate, you know, lyrics that he's doing now. And he's a little bit deeper, whereas Lee is a little bit higher, but it meshes much better here, and it's much less distracting than the previous section. And he's, they're kind of crossing... They're kind of crossing as Dimash is taking breaths and Lee starts singing and then it kind of overlaps a little bit, but it feeds in in a way that feels natural. It's not just like on top of each other constantly. Sorry to keep pausing. I'm just trying to explain it a little bit more, just what's going through my head. I won't pause again. I won't pause again. Until the end. I really wanted to pause there because of her face. Sorry. Man, nice note. So now I think Lee's singing some stuff here. Dimash is just like freestyling. Oh. Da -da 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 -da. Oh. Was that a little bit of... I'm sorry. Uh, of course, I'm going to start over. Was that a little bit of strain that I heard on Dimash's voice there at the end? Towards the end, right there, it gets a little raspy. A little raspy. I know Dimash is so talented, he can literally do whatever he wants to with his voice. But that, it just, a little raspy there. So clean. 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 Right there, just right there at the end of that note, it gets a little, ah, and just starts breaking up just a little bit. Dimash isn't perfect. He may have he may have meant to do that. I'm not saying he didn't, but it just if he did not mean to do that, it just this little bit of rasp. But here, I just I love how this whole video to me seems to be just a stylistic battle between the two of them. But it's like they're working together, but it's like a complete clash of styles, and I love it. It it works really really well. However, I will say. Lee's voice at the beginning here I prefer this I prefer that so much more to the rest of Lee singing throughout this song that voice there this voice here is beautiful it's really really nice I'm just really not a fan of what he slides into later. Let's hear this vocal fry. His is, his is more breathy than mine. I actually get more vocal note out of mine. I'm sure if I practice I could try it, but just... His just so much more breathy. Really nice. And then towards the end here again... See, I just don't enjoy, I, I'm not a fan of that nasal sound of like that kind of Chinese operatic style. It's, it's not my cup of tea. He's very good. It's just not exactly what I enjoy hearing. But here again, it fits at the end. It didn't fit through that diva dance part. I 
I love hearing Dabash just do this, his kind of just vocal freestyle backing, supporting sounds that he just, it just, I love it. There's one part here where I really like it. It's that part. It's na 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 that he does. I love that. And Dimash, has, he just has so much more power. Like, the power, the range, isn't even close. Lee's sounds so much more feminine, nasal, and soft. Whereas Dimash is just this... I mean, he's Dimash. Dimash is just Dimash. He's a vocal powerhouse in every single register that he sings. Every single one... He has the ability to manipulate it to make you feel any way that you want to feel. And he can make notes and vocals come across in any way that he designs them. It, it just, he is a master. It, 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 he's just a masterpiece. That was a really, really interesting take on the diva dance having it done as like a duet, like between two people. And then it was it was into like I'm not sure if, if the drunken concubine thing if that's actually the song name or what or what it is but they had that song like before the diva dance and then they had that song after the diva dance and I'm not sure if that's like the same song that they like split into two and put the diva dance in the middle or if it's like a song and then the diva dance and then another song or what it was but the way that they laid it out was really really interesting because they kind of gave you an introduction to both singers at the beginning and then they just kind of like hard cut and were like here here's the diva dance and then that slid in and just like faded into this last song that they did or last part of the song that they did uh, which they they started off really complimentary of each other and then in the diva dance I thought it clashed a little bit too much for my personal opinion but then after the diva dance, they came back to this, this complimentary vocal style again. And it really, really brought it back together. And I really, really enjoyed the beginning and the end of that song and Dimash's part of the diva dance. I was not crazy about Lee's part. But that's just my own vocal preferences, I guess. Really well done. And I can see why it would be so popular in like the comments and like my private messages for people wanting me to react to. Because very, just the visual elements of it, very interesting with how much they contrast. Um, and as well as with their voices, they contrast, but they also complement each other. It's just really, it's really, really interesting. Thank you to everybody who recommended me this video. Due to how much of the title is in Chinese, I probably never would have found it. So. To everybody who has recommended this to me over the past like month or two, uh, thank you so much. Really, really interesting video. Hopefully I did a good job for you guys and you stuck around until now. Uh, if you liked what you saw, make sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe down below and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Dimash is usually every single Wednesday for Whoa My Gosh Dimash Wednesdays. Uh, this week we're also going to have them on Friday. But next week, we should be back to the Well My Gosh Dimash Wednesday schedule. So I will catch you guys in the next one on Friday. And thank you for joining. Catch you guys next time.